السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Continue إن شاء الله تعالى with the fiqh of marriage and from the book of Sheikh Ibn Uthameen رحمه الله and uh, with the chapter that he talks about الطلاق or divorce and what needs to be observed with matters of divorce uh, the book is meant to be brief there's so many things that can be talked about and it's um, part of seeking knowledge is to be patient with uh, the fact that we need to be gradual and to take things one step after another that's different than if someone is facing a certain situation that he asks the people of knowledge about it that's different but when it comes to learning uh, we should uh, go in a gradual way and we follow what the ulama they do so that you know that we gain knowledge in the proper way inshallah ta'ala so um many things we didn't talk about with with regards to marriage uh, so this is something to be discussed in some other um, platforms inshallah other times but here uh, with regards to the rulings of at-talaq or divorce and what needs to be observed uh, and some of the rulings with regards to at-talaq so at-talaq you know is basically separation between the husband and the wife with either speech or writing or even a sign like even like sign language right so that's something that we have to be careful with and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made marriage for people to get married as far as the the contract itself it's something that is so easy and simple and as a result of that uh, so many heavy obligations and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it a very uh, heavy and thick covenant between uh, the husband and the wife the same way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a talaq or divorce something that is so easy with one word uh, you know if a husband says the word of talaq uh, the divorce is, is done and means before that to prevent it but also we have to be careful with what is the exact words what is if it's said then becomes divorce becomes there or Uh, writing is the same as a saying so if you know a person for example husband sending his wife a text message right and he says directly clearly the words of divorce that she is divorced then she is divorced and that counts as a divorce or with uh, sign language if it's very clear and the person you know uh, intended clearly that this is divorce as it's going to be discussed inshallah ta'ala. what is the ruling of the talaq Uh, what is the original ruling of it? Because as the original ruling of marriage, as we said, it can be for someone it's forbidden or for someone it's obligatory, for someone it's recommended, for someone it's uh, makruh or disliked. The same thing for the talaq. But uh, the, the original ruling of the talaq, as the sheikh, he takes the opinion that it's makruh. It's something that is disliked. Why? Because a person, when he divorces, many of the benefits that are mentioned earlier with regards to marriage is basically missed. The person would miss out on, on great rewards uh, by uh, having the marriage in place. And of course, if it involves for the family to be uh, you know, affecting it in a, in a harmful way with children and also for the wife and for the man, you know, all kinds of things that can happen as a result of the divorce, which is not liked, Therefore, it makes it something that is disliked. And uh, the hadith that the Sheikh mentioned, even though the hadith is weak, but it's been something established among the people of knowledge to mention this. The most hated halal to Allah is a talaq or divorce. Uh, so, yes, it's permissible to divorce. It's not a sinful thing to be or to do divorce, but it's makro. It's not something that is even when people hear it, hear about it. It's not a very pleasant thing to, um, for example, someone is divorcing, mashallah, congratulations. It's usually for marriage, but not for talaq. And he mentioned, rahimahullah, that at talaq, sometimes it's a necessity. It has to be done. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made the, the rulings of talaq or divorce, because sometimes it's important to be done. Whether it's harm, harm happening to the woman by uh, staying with a man that is uh, causing so much harm to her, Or the, say, or the opposite, the man is you know, being harmed as a result of continuation of marriage or any other things other than that from the objectives of marriage. And from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted it for the people and did not make it difficult for them as 
others they think for example in some forms of Christianity where uh, it's forbidden for them to get divorced and it's something that is impractical something that is against the nature of the human beings which shows the difference between Sharia that is perfect and it's universal versus something that is with uh, the alternation and altering with things with like men they would they would change in the in the rulings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so and he also he says that if a man he hates his wife so much and he's not able to have the patience with with his wife then there's no harm if he divorced but then things has to be observed so this we're talking here about not what uh, what other things that would make a person divorce his wife or a wife asking for khula which is not the subject here uh, is briefly talking about what are the things to be observed if already the talaq is going to be done from a fiqh perspective. The first thing is that he should not divorce his wife when she is in her menses, in her monthly menses. It is not permissible to divorce her while she's in that state. Uh, and if he does this, he's disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he's committing a sin to divorce his wife while she is in her menses. And in that case, it's mandatory upon the husband to take his wife back. So if it's the first or the second time of divorce, he has to take her back. And he has to wait till she is clean from the menses. And then if he wants to divorce her, then he can. And as it's going to be mentioned in the second case, but with the condition that he did not have relations with her after she is uh, purified from the menses. So and what is uh, needed to be then or uh, to be on even on the on, on the safer side is that if that happened that he divorced his wife while she's in her menses, then he has to take her back, and he has to wait till she is purified from the menses. And what's more recommended is that he stays, uh, you know, keeps the marriage till the next uh, menses period, and then after she is purified from that, then either he would keep her, or if he want to divorce, then he can divorce them. So this is the first point that he, it is not permissible to divorce while the woman is in her menses. And that uh, brings in uh, something that we have to pay attention to, which is also related to what's coming next, is that many people, they divorce, you know, just as, a, as an anger in a moment, uh, and they would say the words of divorce. And this is, shows the irresponsibility and people not guarding what they say. Divorce is not, since it's easy to divorce by a word of mouth, but men, since they are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them this, a responsibility that divorce is from the man uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the quality to have patience and to control his anger and to control himself uh, so that's why he has to be responsible for this and not to divorce just because the wife said something that angered him or because the wife says divorce me divorce me divorce me because they're arguing and then he would just get angry and gets an ego issue and then he says that she's divorced all of that is irresponsibility for the man because when he's saying it like this what if she's in her menses and he's not thinking, he's not making decisions in the proper way, and he falls into a sin if he divorces her in uh, during her menses? Someone would say, well, you know, if she's in her menses, it's easy to figure that out immediately while they're arguing. So he can say, well, she's not in her menses, so I can divorce her. And that's not a responsible uh, action from him. But then the second point shows that still the person has to uh, make such a decision uh, in, 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 in the proper way. So that's why the second thing is that it's not permissible to divorce one's wife in, uh, when, she's, when she's clean. That means she does not have her menses. But in, in time of tuhr, the time of the period of purity, that she's, she's not in her menses, but they, if they had relations, right, it is not permissible then to divorce her in the times that she's not having her menses, if they had relations, intimate relationship. Uh, uh, unless, of course, she's, she's pregnant. So meaning that if a man want to divorce his wife and she's not on her menses, she is, uh, but they had intimate relationship uh, from the time that she finished, finished her menses in that period of being pure, then it's not permissible to divorce her till she gets her menses and then she's purified afterwards. And then after that, he can have, uh, he can make the divorce. Uh, unless she is uh, pregnant, you know, then in that case, the divorce is valid. Right? Because when she's pregnant, she would not get her menses. 
ان الله سبحانه وتعالى says يا ايها النبي اذا طلقتم النساء فطلقوهن لعدتهن who profit of Allah if you divorce the women then divorce them to their prescribed period ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما he said لا يطلقها وهي حائض is not to divorce her when she's in her menses ولا في طهر قد جمعها فيه not in time of of طهر or purification but he had relations with her ولكن يتركها اذا حاضت وطهرت طلقت تطليقها Rather to leave her if she till she gets her menses and then she's purified, then he divorces her one time. So the first two things that it's not permissible to divorce during the menses, and it's not permissible to divorce when she is in the state of purity, but in they had relations in this time. The second thing is that he should not divorce if he divorced more than one time. And that's another common thing that people do is that they divorce their wife three times and in one setting like this. So he should never say that you are divorced twice or divorced three times or repeated more than one time. You know, this is haram. This is not permissible to make the divorce three times. And uh, it, he, he narrates a, a narration here that, uh, that um, a man at the time of the Prophet والسلام, he divorced his wife three times together. So it was said, أَيُلْعَبُ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَأَنَا بَيْنَ أَظْهُرِكُمْ The book of Allah is being played with while I'm uh, among you. You know, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made the divorce three times, not as the, that person did, not to be done in one setting, in one statement. It's uh, meant for the relationship to be fixed if there's means to fix it. So a person is given one chance after another. So one divorce and then she, during the waiting period, he can take his wife back. And then if you divorced again and within the waiting period, he can take her back. But then the third one, it's not permissible for them to go back again with one another unless she, after her period of waiting after the divorce, she, get, she gets married to someone else, not for the intention to go back to the first husband, but with the intention of really sincere marriage to be in it forever. And then if something happens and they divorced, meaning the second marriage, and after the period is over, then if she wants to go back to the first husband, but without playing tricks or or doing things to at the hayl or uh, as if, uh, you know, playing around the rules of and the orders of Allah. So the same thing when people divorce three times, you know, they are basically making mockery of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's not, this is, this is not how it's intended to be. So a man, the Prophet sallallahu when he said that, a man, he said, oh, Prophet of Allah, should I, should I kill this man? As if he is committed such an evil thing, of course, he was forbidden from doing so. And he said, Rahimahullah, that many people, they have ignorance when it comes to rulings of, of divorce. So anytime they, it just happened that they want to divorce, they would just divorce without you know, paying attention to the time or the number of times that they made divorce or whether she's in her menses or impurity that they had relations during that time or how many times to say it. He's angry. So he keep on saying to his wife that she's divorced, she's divorced she's like this. You know, this is only crazy people or people that have deficiency in their mind would do such a thing. And a person has to have responsibility in what we say and, and what we do. And we, we know that one word can take the person into the hellfire. If a person says a word of kufr, this belief. So we are taught to be responsible for what we say. That's why it's mandatory, obligatory upon the Muslim, the slave of Allah, that he uh, is, is, uh, is, is going and living his life according to the limits of Allah. We are not just uh, free to do whatever we want. We are slaves of Allah. So to follow the rules and the, and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he should not transgress these limits. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Talaq itself, Whoever transgress, go beyond the limits of Allah, he had wronged himself. And he said, And whoever transgress the limits of Allah, they are the zalimun, the wrongdoers. Uh, so this is the end of this brief uh, chapter. And then after that, the next chapter, we'll talk about what the outcome or what uh, deeds or things or rulings that applies as a result of the divorce afterwards, after the divorce. But this is just to mention how the divorce is done. And this is uh, the, the divorce that is bid'i or innovative one, which is wrong. That's why talaq sunnah and the ulama, they say talaq sunnah the talaq according to the sunnah, not to think that this is a recommended That means it's recommended for people to divorce, but it shows the proper way to make divorce. If divorce is the right decision to be made, is to be done uh, when the woman is not in her menses, 
and it's uh, in, a, in, in times of purity that they did not have intimate relationship in. And it's the first or the second one. Uh, and and uh, that, of course, you see the wisdom behind it. There are all kinds of rulings to prevent the divorce from happening, to avoid the moments of anger. Many people, they regret, they divorce, and then they come after the next day. They go to Asiyah and they ask him, I divorced my wife, what do I do now? It was a moment of anger, and then the next day they're fine with each other. Uh, and it shows that sometimes an action of, of irresponsible action can can uh, affect the person for the rest of his life. How many people for moment of anger, they do road rage, they can kill someone or hurt someone or uh, things like this. And uh, that's why a person should not act when they're angry. They should wait till uh, you know they're uh, calm and they would make then decisions based on also the knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why even the idda, the idda period is going to be mentioned, why there's a waiting period and it's the right of the husband to take his wife after the first or the second divorce in the waiting period. And she is to stay in her home and not to leave her home. All of these are means for them to go back together uh, and to take all the means that if there is any chance for the marriage and that family to be preserved and to be protected, this is basically what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, if it's better off than for them to be separated, then this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it easy for them then if they follow the rules of Allah. So we'll stop here, inshallah, and we continue next time with more of these rulings, inshallah. Okay, barakallahu feekum, inshallah, we'll continue next time. And we have the next class in 10 minutes, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.